Okay, so when I wasn't recording, I actually had to go into my Maya preference folders and delete my Maya preferences. So why would I have to do something like that? Well, in this case, it was because Maya wasn't seeing my mental ray plugin correctly. Even though the plugin was functioning in the plugin manager, it wasn't actually working um, as it should. So the way to do that, if you're ever working in Maya and something just breaks and it just will never work again, yeah, it happens every once in a while. You can set Maya to the default settings when you installed it. And it's actually very simple. Uh, you can't do it through the UI. You have to come into your folders. Um, and the where it is, is actually in your C drive. And then you have to go under users, your name. And then you have to go under my documents and then scroll down to Maya. And then you'll see all of the versions that you happen to have. And you click on your current version that you're using and there is a prefs folder. Now, if you want to reset and you have to make sure, or you have to keep in mind that all the extra tools that you built up here will be gone, all your extra settings, everything will be reset. Um, what you do is click on this, you select all these options, you hit delete. The preference folder is now empty. The next time you start Maya, and you have to do this when Maya is not working, obviously. Um, so the next time you start Maya, it'll populate these folders once again with the standard values, and you'll probably solve uh, most of your problems. So let's keep going. All right, so we have our melon and we have our seeds. Uh, before I finish completely texturing my melon, I'd like to add ambient occlusion. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. I was actually having some trouble with one of the ways. Um, so I'm going to show you usually the safer bet. And I'm going to save, and I'm going to save as to my iterative save. Once again, you should probably have more versions than this uh, when you're following along. Um, so let's see. First, we have to go into um, the layout uh, selection, and we need to go into into rendering and then that's going to bring up lighting and shading menu right here and I want to do a batch bake mental ray. Now this can be used to do, it's actually a very powerful uh, tool. Um, first of all I want to select my object and make sure objects to bake is selected. Bake to texture that's fine. Bake optimization I only have one object so I'm going to set it to single object and this just sets how the computation is spread across your CPU. If you have multiple cores, it'll set uh, individual objects to single cores and um, I pretty much optimize it. Um, so now we have to go down here and hit Use Bake Set Override because we need to select our um, parameters. What we want is occlusion. You can also bake in lighting, which can come in handy uh, if you're doing more advanced stuff. Um, but we're going to use occlusion. I'm going to set the occlusion rays to uh, 124. I don't know why, but um, 124 sounds good for now. Um, baked, that's fine. I'm going to change the resolution to a 2048. And the reason I'm not doing a full texture size is because uh, ambient occlusion is only going to add shadowing effect to our melon. It's not going to... Um, add a lot of detail so you can upscale it in uh, Photoshop and save you some render time. Um, samples, one is fine. If you increase this, it exponentially increases the amount of time you're going to sit here uh, waiting for the render. Final gather, um, that can be set to one. Uh, reflect, we don't have to worry about because it's a very simple scene. And let's convert. Man, I seem to be having the same problem I was having before. So, as I was saying earlier, when you go into your preference folders, you can delete all of those. 
and the next time you open Maya, it will populate those again. You can see now they're there. And I don't know what's going on. Maya 2015 is one of the most buggy uh, Maya iterations that I've seen in a long time. Uh, 2008 was a particularly bad year. But generally, things do improve. But Maya 2015 is rock solid. I've never had any problems with it. Um, and unfortunately, this one's not so great. Such is life. All right, let's see if that solved our problem. I'm going to come into rendering and try lighting and shading, batch bake, mental ray. Uh, first, let me make sure my mental ray plugin is working. Yes, it does seem to be. Um, I'm going to set, I'm going to leave these to default. You never know, it could be something weird going on. I'm going to leave the revo resolution really low. I am going to set a target though. Really? Really? Okay. Alright, everybody cross your fingers. <laughs> okay. So it did seem to work that time. Um, So what it did in this case is it baked our lighting, which is all right. It's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to come down to occlusion and make sure my rays are on and my falloffs on are set to zero. And let's cross our fingers once more. All right. It seems like it's actually working this time. going to take a little bit longer to render this time um, but there you go so you can see what it's doing it's adding shadow where um, you would imagine there to be shadow and it's actually adding shadow right on top of this which is really cool and it's actually pretty useful which we can use in a little bit um, what we want to do is come down into our resolution and I'm gonna I'm gonna at least double this for now I I'm afraid to pump it up much further because of how unstable things have become um, yes yes make sure it's selected but hopefully um, we'll have something usable. So what I'm going to do is because it's baking these these normals straight onto the UVs, um, what I can do is place it on here and it'll actually dramatically change the way um, this looks. And I'm actually going to come into my sponge. No. Smudge. Sponge smudge. Oh, yes, because I'm rendering this, it's going to take a long time. I'm just kind of messing around with my texture because I'm waiting. Uh, if you have a powerful computer, you can do this as well. Uh, if your computer is not nearly as powerful, uh, if you're working on a laptop or something, I wouldn't recommend uh, working on stuff in the background while something's rendering. It's, rendering is very, very taxing on a computer, and we like computers and we want them to be healthy, and we definitely don't want to make them explode when we're working. Okay. Still working? Okay. Yes, this is going to take quite a while. All right, well, we can start working on other things. Um, I'm going to start pulling up Crazy Bump. Here we go. 
And um, I want to explain something that's really useful. 1024 by 1024. So say you want uh, a very specific texture um, that needs a normal map and you want to paint in your height map, you can absolutely do that. Um, most people don't do it. Uh, they'll use texture reference, but this is a really powerful way of getting very unique looking stuff. Uh, when you start, um, when you get really used to working around uh, crazy bump and stuff, you'll start to notice when people use it, it'll become obvious to you when someone's used it. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just going through my paint brush and I'm just painting a black and white image. And the reason I'm doing this is because Crazy Bump can interpolate black and white data as a height map, like uh, many programs can. But what's cool about this is that you don't have to worry about painting in normals with the different colors representing the different angles. What you can do is take this, I'm going to hit Control copy, and I'm going to go into Crazy Bump and paste height map from clipboard. I'm going to click on that. And what I can do is make a normal map based on the image I just painted. And you can see that black represents the darkest and white represents the highest. And the way height maps work is it's not black is a low setting. It has to be in contrast. So you can see that in my texture, the the very center of this, which is black, is still the same color as uh, the plain white. So the way this works is the black is contrasting with the white, which gives it this ridge, which makes it seem like it's going uh, further in. So what we can do, what we can do to enhance our our uh, textures is uh, using an ambient occlusion map. And I think that's finished now in the background. All right. Yes, yes. Much smoother now. So I'm going to go into my material attributes, and I'm going to find the incandescence. It puts it in incandescence. Um, and I want to view this. No, I don't want to view this. I want to... Holy crap. I want to edit this. Ah, I need to set this up so it uh, so it goes automatically into Photoshop. I'm just trying to find it now. <laughs> Stop. Go away. Um, date modified. I, I should have set my project it since I reset my preferences it, it lost the the ability to set projects um, from the past so we need to find the actual source of this it's in C users my documents Documents, Maya, Projects, Default, Render Data. This is a pain in the butt, I know. Uh, mental Ray, Light Map. And there we go. All the stuff. That I make. Oh, you can actually see the one that has the light. Weird, but kind of cool. Anyways. What is our name? Sorry, guys. I know this is a bore. Uh, PV Sphere, GTP Sphere. Okay. Sort by date, please. There we go. That took entirely too long. All right. So because this is 
much smaller than my original image. I have to size it up. Actually, is this too small? What are we looking at here? No. I just forgot. We're working in a very high res texture size. So I'm pulling this up big. And it interpolated that well enough. Um, so now I can go into my different mixing modes. And you can play around with this yourself and see uh, what you think is best for you. Uh, I think in this case, multiply is working best for me. So I'm going to leave this as my new texture. I'm going to save as Targa Watermelon Diff. And I'm going to come back into my scene, get rid of this junk, open up my blend once more. And we can see that now that lighting information is baked into the actual texture. Now it doesn't look like much, but this will definitely add some detail for your, your lighting later. Um, I just have a theory real quick to try. Interesting. All right, so what I was considering doing is um, duplicating this, and you can see that it actually makes my shadows much more uh, prevalent. And what I'm thinking of doing is adding uh, something colored, uh, something similar to color dodge. And this is just an experiment. We're doing it right on the fly. So I'm just curious to see if we can get some fake subsurface scattering going on. So it, you can see what I did here is I'm just trying to get where I think light would be bleeding through this. And I should probably use my Wacom tablet for this, actually. So I'm going to change my hardness way down so it's nice soft. So you can see now what it's doing is simulating light bleeding through this texture. And I'm not 100% sure if this is necessary or not, but it's just another thing to add a little bit more interesting detail. All right, so I'm gonna save this once more. Save as, make sure it's my Targa. And I know I said we were done with the diff. So I apologize. So the next thing I wanna do is go into uh, my normal 
and I'm going to grab the whole thing and I'm going to bring this into crazy bump and see what kind of effect we get if we use this as a height map. So what I'm intending to do is use my ambient occlusion as a height map, which then I can use as kind of a way to make this black area a depression where the seed is being popped out. So if we take a look at this on, get rid of that, um, on our, oops, I pressed the wrong button once more. Ah, uh, yes, this is the one we want. Show 3D preview. And what I want to do is make this bleed much further by increasing the very large detail. So you can see what it's doing around these shapes now. And if I turn off shape recognition, that actually seems to hurt us in this case. I'm going to turn the intensity up way high. And I'm going to, you know, actually, that's a little crazy. That's way too high. All right, so now I'm going to save this on my clipboard. And because it's such a large file size, it'll take a little bit. And I want to create a new folder. And I want to grab all the stuff that I was using for my color. Uh, minus my UV maps and I'm gonna drop those into that group and this is now my diffuse and I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it norm a hey, norm and I'm gonna paste in my normal map cool so the next thing we want to do is make a normal map based on the actual um, texture. So we can do that easily enough. We can come under Photoshop. And I'm going to select my whole thing, copy, come back into Crazy Bump, open Photograph from Clipboard this time. And this is where a lot of the finagling comes in with uh, Photoshop. Um, so and what I mean by that is we want, so the rind of a watermelon is smooth, but it's going to interpolate these areas between dark and light colors as depth because that's how it works. We don't want that. So when we pull in our finished normal map from this texture into uh, our new normal map, we're going to have to get rid of that information, but we really want to keep uh, the fruit information in this. Uh, even the rind we know is going to be flat. So um, now that I'm done talking about it, I think I'll show you. <sighs> okay. Didn't copy everything from the clipboard, so it loaded the wrong image. Cross shift copy. Paste that just to make sure it actually works this time. Um, ch -ch -ch. There's no way to go back. How annoying. All right. Open. Paste clipboard from photo. Paste photo from clipboard. 
All right, Crazy Bump, let's go. Ah, much better. All right, so I think what we want is for the darker areas to be the deeper areas. So I want to select this version. And cool. Actually, just by default, that's looking all right. Obviously, the rind is not right. Um, but the area that we care about, which is the meat, that is looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to boost the fine detail. And that's really looking pretty cool. I'm going to bring down the very large. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. And we all did this just by painting. Didn't use any texture. Well, we referenced textures, which is important because we want to make things based on real world objects. But we painted this, which is really cool. Um, something you can try every once in a while is reversing the intensity, see which looks better. Obviously, I'll boost this up. Yeah, the other way was definitely looking much better. And I think that's actually good. So I'm going to save this to my clipboard. It's going to take a little bit. Alrighty. And now I'm going to go into Photoshop, make sure my norm is selected, paste. Excellent. It worked. So we don't want this just placed right on top. We want to mix this normal map with our last one. So the way we do that is just scroll through our options and find uh, which one best works. Uh, overlay seems to be pretty good at the moment. So now we have some work to do with cleaning up our normal maps. So what I'm going to do first is grab um, the average blue, and it's a little hard to see at the moment. That's this. This value is like halfway in between blue, um, and it's basically just the background, right? So I'm going to make a new layer with that color. And I'm going to put that in the background. Because um, a lot of this we don't want. So I'm going to come under my layer mask. And I'm just going to start painting out everything that I don't think is necessary. All I want this for is the areas near the sea. I definitely don't want these really hard edges because that's going to make it really obvious in our render. All right, so we have very gradual um bring some of that back actually. So that's the nice thing about working about with masks is that you can always bring some back. And I'm actually going to touch this one up a little bit. I'm going to set my opacity to something low, like 17. And by doing that, I'm really just, really just softening up this normal map, which is kind of the insert of our, of our cutout. And it doesn't necessarily need to be so strong. OK. So that looks good. Uh, the next thing we need is this. And uh, we need a similar mask. We can actually maybe even copy. Uh, I think there is a way to copy a mask. But we'll just do it again by hand, just for the practice. I'm going to bring up my paintbrush, set my opacity. Make sure I'm actually in the mask. And 
I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm just getting rid of anything but the detail with the meat of the fruit. Increase my, or decrease my hardness rather. All right, well that's pretty good. I think that's gonna look good for the meat. Um, let's take a look at our reference one more time. Trying to look at the highlights and it looks like there is bump. You can see that the light is being broken up by kind of like noise. So what I can do is do a file new and I'm going to do, yeah, 4096. And I'm going to come under filter and I'm going to do noise, add noise. And I want monochromatic. Monochromatic, please. And that's good. So I just have static. And I'm, I'm gonna control copy. Actually, I'm gonna make a select much smaller segment. Copy and open height map from clipboard. Hey, watermelon, how you doing? You look delicious. All right, so this is obviously a little too intense for us. Um, take the intensity down. And right away, it's starting to look like something that we want. Um, I could definitely change the details on this, but for now, I think this is exactly what we want. So I'm going to hit save, save normal stuff file. Oh, no, clipboard. Save file to clipboard. All right, seems like it's done. And I'm going to come back into our project. And real quick, I'm going to bring my UVs up just to make sure I know where it is. And I just pasted. And then I'm going to copy paste again. And because it's noise, I'm not too concerned about this texture seam. It's almost impossible to see. Um, and I'm going to make sure that these aren't being used by this. And I think that's it. Um, let's make sure these are actually in our normal. Um, turn that off. Uh, and let's go ahead and combine these two. I'm going to right click and merge layers. And I'm actually going to duplicate this once. Actually, no, I'll leave it standard. All right, so let's file, save as, Monotarga, watermelon, underscore, nor. Yes, 24-bit. We do need the color information in this instance. Material attributes. Bump mapping file. I'm going to come to my computer. Oh, things are all reversed. And it'll probably not look so great because I think I forgot to see. Yeah, it looks a little gross. Um, 
I didn't set this as a tangent space to normal. It's being used as a bump, and we don't want that at the moment. We want tangent space normals. Cool. That adds just the type of stuff I was looking for. Obviously, we have a texture seam down here, and that is because of our ambient occlusion map. I'm actually going to fix that because it's a quick fix. doesn't seem to be working. Ah, it's because it's behind. All right, what was this? Multiply. Okay. Color burn actually looks pretty interesting. If I set it to color burn and I decrease the value some. Hmm. And I decrease this some also. That looks more like it. Um, so what was happening is um, this, we didn't give ourselves enough texture bleeding. Um, so I have to come in with a brush real quick. And we saw that where that was happening. Pin is all sorts of freaking out. Ah, uh, this is the only one. So I'm just getting rid of this this area of ambient occlusion, and the reason I am is because it was messing with our UV set. Uh, the black was bleeding into our UVs, and I could have set that when I did the original render. Um, but I did not. All right, so that's good for us now. I'm gonna go ahead and file, save as, Targa, watermelon diff. Yes, yes. Oops, I reloaded the normal map. All right, so now we don't have that ugly uh, line going right through there. All right, so we have a pretty convincing looking watermelon. The only last thing that we're missing is a convincing looking specular map. Right now the specular on this is a little kind of funky. So we can actually do this in Crazy Bump as well. We just have to make sure that we have the texture I'm going to select the whole thing, control shift copy, control shift copy, uh, copies everything that is visible. And I'm going to come back into Crazy Bump, open, paste from clipboard please. So the funny thing about normal maps is they only work well if there are uh, spec, if there is spec.
Kind of looks like actual meat now, doesn't it? Gross. Okay. So yes, we want this one. Actually, it doesn't really matter much. I'm going to save my scene real quick. All right, and now instead of looking at the normals, uh, we'll just leave those default. We're looking at the specularity on this one. So you can see specularities are always black and white maps, unless you're doing metallics, in which case you want to use a metallic color and boost that up a bit. Um, but you can see in this case it looks really strange. Um, so this is just another one of those things that's all done based by uh, experimentation. You know, you, you keep playing around with these. You keep looking at your object. Um, when we're looking at a reference of a watermelon, you can see that it's actually very, very shiny uh, and very bumpy. So we have to make sure our, our brightness is actually quite high. And I turned down slope influence, which seemed to help quite a bit get it smoothed out. Texture influence as well. I think I'm going to add some noise. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. And we can turn the intensity down of the normal map to zero, or at least as close as we can. And then this will actually give us a good idea of um, the specular as well. You can see that I'm not quite getting enough variation Yeah, I'd say that's about right. Maybe maybe right there. We're going to have to adjust the the one over here because it's definitely uh, way too different between the black or the the darker green and the lighter green. Um but the meat looks okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save save specularity to clipboard. And once again, I'm going to create a new folder Call this spec. And just, okay, it didn't seem to copy that time. All right, much better. And now that we have the fruit, um, working right. What I can do now is come down and adjust the contrast and get the peel looking a little bit more like it. And I think that looks great. So I'm going to save that to 
clipboard once more. All right. Cool. So now we just need to make a mask for this layer and create a mask. There, piece of cake. Actually, I think I'm gonna have this bleed over. All right, now I can save my specular. Save as, Targa, spec. And this we only need to save as a 16-bit because it's only black and white. I'm gonna save my whole Photoshop file real quick. And we're gonna come back into Maya. We've got our normal map, material attributes. I wanna make sure that I have the newest one just in case I forgot to reload at one point. And I'm gonna right click again, material attributes, and under specular color, we're gonna plug in our spec map. Around spec, open. There we go. Very slimy, very gross. Uh, and we still need to go in the the blend and kind of. Play around with the specular roll off and the eccentricity. Hang in there, guys. We're almost done. There we go. I think that's looking much nicer now. All right. If we were to take this into a renderer, it would start looking just like we wanted to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save. And the next portion is going to be rendering. Um, and... We'll do a second tutorial. We'll do that on the, uh, the glass. All right, guys. One last one. Hang in there.